Thank you for joining me today while we are walking in the light. I want to consider today the lost axe head, and I read about that in Second Kings, the sixth chapter. It reads like this, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. In other words, this is the group of prophets talking to the master prophet. They said the place where we're dwelling is a little bit too small. We need to build us another house. And they said, Let us go, we pray thee, under Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. And as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. You know what I have decided in my life and thinking about the church world? Many today, be they Christian pastors or whoever, have lost the axe head of power and of joy. Oh yes, they have ability, they have training, they have sincerity, and they have earnestness. But you hear me, they are only chopping with the handle. Listen to Mark as he records in the ninth chapter. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought thee unto thee, my son, which hath a dumb spirit, and wheresoever it taketh him, it teareth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out and they could not. Now sometimes we stand before a demonized world, powerless with only the handle. We need to recognize there is nothing we can do in our own strength. We need to recognize, number one, the axe handle was borrowed. The axe was borrowed. Everything we have belongs to God. That's why I don't understand why people today have such a hard time putting their money or the money into an offering plate when we as Christians, everything we have should belong to God. We may study, we may have personality, and we may have enthusiasm but you remember one thing. The axe head of power is borrowed. It's not ours. Some churches are filled with people who are fervent in the Spirit, but not filled with the Spirit. And they find themselves chopping with the handle. Sunday after Sunday, people come into our churches. They're hurting. They're wondering which way to go. They're abused by drugs and alcohol and illicit sex, whatever else may be in their lives. They come into our services and they leave just like they came because we forget that the axe was borrowed. We need to recognize the tragedy of lost power. We used to pray with liberty. We used to teach with power. We used to preach with freedom. There was a time when we Christians influenced our children. We used to witness to our neighbors. A very serious condition in our life is to be powerless and not know it. I believe today that our lives ought to be so that others could look in us and see Christ. I think sometimes we're like Samson when he raised from Delilah's lap. And she said, Behold, Samson, the Philistines be upon thee. And he said, I will arise as at other times. And he stood and he shook himself 
And then he said he wished not that the Spirit had departed from him. Listen, we may have the greatest preacher in the country, and he may preach the greatest sermons, but unless you and I, as the children of God, realize we need the power, we need the, we need the power that's in the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are only chopping with a handle. Now, if you've ever chopped wood, if you've ever done any kind of labor like that, you recognize you can stand and chop at a log all day with a handle, and nothing is going to happen. My friend, without the Spirit of God, that's just about the situation of our churches today. Like the Sardis Church in the book of Revelation, thir the third chapter, they had a name of being alive, but they were dead. Pitiful are the churches and the preachers who are chopping with the handle. Notice what the servant said. He stopped chopping when he realized that the axe head had flipped off into the water. He stopped chopping. Maybe it would be good if we would stop until we found the axe head of power again. Maybe we need to back up a little bit, but you know, it's so hard to go back and pick up what we've laid down. But do you know what we've done? We have substituted program. We've substituted enthusiasm. We've substituted activity and energy, all of this in the place of the Spirit of God. We get programs. We get we get uh, uh, situations. We have p uh, policies that we, that we have substituted for the Spirit of God. We work harder without the power. It's not what's done for God that counts, but it's what is done by God that counts. Maybe in our churches today, maybe in your life, you need to go back and pick up again the axe head and go on down the road. The question that he asked is, where did you lose it? It was an important question. And he was honest enough to show him the place. It would be good if we were honest enough to acknowledge where we have lost the power of God. We need to go back and realize that he's still there. We need to realize that he's doing for us. He knew the place that he lost it. Perhaps you would be honest enough to say that you have lost the power. It may be we have dropped it in business cares. Maybe you have started a business and it's got so good and it's taken so much of your time, you no longer have time to do what God would have you to do. Let me tell you something. We need to back up a little bit and get a hold of the axe head again. It may have been dropped into worldly living. Now, I'm, uh, I'm not going to give all of that stuff to you today. What you might call worldly living, you do it yourself. But maybe because we're living like the world that we've lost the axe head of power. Or could it be an evil habit that has gripped our lives that has caused us to lose the axe head of power? Or... Could it be that we just have indifference? We go to the church service, and we're just indifferent. So what? They're having church. I can go here and endure, and when I leave, I have fulfilled my hour and a half responsibility to God. It might have been we have disobeyed His commandments. I'm going to tell you that I believe that God requires strict obedience to His commandments. It's not when we read the Bible that we begin to analyze it and say, what does it mean? I, I have to believe it means what it says. When it says to come out from among the world and be separate, why try to explain it? That's exactly what the word means. If we have stopped praying like we used to, could that be where we lost the axe head? Or maybe we don't do the Bible reading like we used to. We used to have a daily devotion that we read each day, and we've kind of let that slip. Have we neglected there? I, Elijah said, show me where it fell into the water. Now, I believe 
that we have to be honest enough today to, to acknowledge where we lost it. If we are not sure where it was, let's ask God to shine His searchlight of love into our hearts and show us just where it is. I believe He will do that. And you know what Elijah did? It seemed like it was kind of a, a silly little thing, but he cut a stick and he threw it into the water and the iron did swim. Now, someone said, oh, you don't really believe that the axe had swam. I believe that it really did. We can have the power again if we will do our part. But we can't expect God to do his part and ours both. Listen to Psalms 51. He said, Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all of mine iniquities. Here's the secret. Create within me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit within, w from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Now, if you will, please notice verse 13. He said all of these other things. Make me to hear joy and gladness, and, and hide not thy face from my sins, and don't blot out mine iniquities. Create with me a clear heart. He said, and then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. We have a choice today of going back and asking God to renew in us the Spirit. Could it be that the Spirit will live in our hearts again? I personally believe the iron did swim. If I can believe that in that little stream, by Elijah putting in a stick, that the axe head did come to the top, I realize that God can renew in my life what is needed today. He can forgive me of my, my inadequacies. He can forgive me of my, my bad temperament. He can forgive me, and he can help me. Now, notice one other thing about this story. The Bible said, He reached out his hand, and he took it. God has provided salvation. He's provided the way into heaven. And it's up to you and I to reach out and take it. I've often thought it might be good if God would have made us robots, but he didn't. And he reached out and he took it. After sin is confessed, faith receives. To ask God and then doubt is another in insult. And so I ask you today, are you chopping with a handle? Is your church doing what it should for God? Let us ask God to help us to be a part of an active church where the Spirit of God is really working. He was chopping. He lost it. He stopped. He told the man of God, they put the stick in the water, the iron did swim, and he reached out and took it. We have the axe head of power, not to boast about, but to use. God is wanting you and I to be an example in this world. You know what I've decided when I've read this story again, and I've read it many, many times? I've decided that I'm going to keep on chopping. I have reached out and I want all of the Spirit of God that He can give me so that they may see Christ in me, the hope of glory. How about you? Would that be your desire today? Would you just keep on chopping? Thank you for letting me share the gospel with you today on Walking in the Light. Please feel free to drop us a line to Walking in the Light, Post Office Box 28, Cyclone, West Virginia, 24827, and may God bless you.